Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to go over a very fun and very classic problem from maths, and this falls in the territory of probability. This is known as a broken stick problem, and here's how it goes. Suppose we have a stick of length one, and we cut it in two uniformly chosen points, so randomly in two uniformly uh, chosen points. What is the probability that the rem three remaining pieces can form a triangle? Okay, so we have a stick of length one, like so, and we cut it in two sort of randomly chosen points, say there and there, and we want to know what's the probability that these three pieces can form a triangle. Now notice that you're not always gonna be able to form a triangle because, you know, for example, if you have that's your stick and you just so happen to cut it there and there, so two really small pieces and one really long one, there's no way you can form a triangle out of that. But, you know, if you cut it relatively evenly, then, you know, you're gonna get something that's approximately an equilateral triangle. So sometimes you can form a triangle, sometimes you can't. We want to know what is the probability you can uh, form a triangle. Now I really do encourage you to have a go at this problem, so if you want to, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm gonna jump straight into a solution. Okay, so there are a bunch of different ways you can solve this problem, and so if you did have a go at the problem, you may have come up with a solution which is different to the one I'm about to present, but the one I'm about to show you is perhaps the most simple. Um, it's not too difficult to wrap your head around and uses very elementary kind of probability and a very important fact to do with triangles, and that's what I'm going to explain now. That is the triangle inequality. Okay, now there are a bunch of different statements of this, uh, you know, if we're using norms or metrics, but I'm just going to literally just be using triangles. So suppose we have a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C, and let's suppose that A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C, and they're all, of course, positive. Then for a triangle with these side lengths to kind of exist, we must have that A plus B is bigger than C. So the sum of the two shorter lengths of our triangle must be strictly bigger than the longest length of our triangle. And one way to kind of, uh, sorry, and if this holds, then we can form a triangle and it's kind of an if and only if. So if this doesn't hold, we can't form a triangle. And if it does hold, then we can form a triangle. Okay, and the one way to think about this is take our longest length C, like so, then if A plus B is strictly bigger than C, then what we can do, say it's only a tiny bit bigger than C, we can essentially almost draw another straight line on top of C, but it will have, it'll be a little bit longer. So something like that maybe. So that would have side length A and that would be B, and that's still a triangle. So this, the, you know, if you do A plus B, it's gonna be just a bit bigger than C, but that's fine because we know that A plus B is bigger than C. And if A plus B was less than C, then no matter how you try, you're never going to be able to essentially make these two lines here meet. So if you have C here, and you start, B, you know, one side length of length B from this side and one from A on this side, no matter how, you know, you rotate these lines, if A plus B is less than C, there's no way you can make these two lines meet because the most optimal point for them to meet was if they kind of go along C, but obviously if A plus B is less than C, then they're never going to be able to meet. Okay, so hopefully if you've not seen a triangle inequality before, that's kind of given you a uh, perhaps a little sketch proof as to why it holds. Uh, but yeah, just try and convince yourself that that's true, and I'm going to move on. Okay, so to continue, I've made a little claim on the whiteboard, and that is our three pieces form a triangle. So remember, we had our one stick, and we cut it in two places to make three pieces. I claim that those three pieces will make a triangle if and only if all pieces have length less than a half. So all of our three pieces have length less than a half. And now this is not too difficult to prove, essentially just using the triangle inequality, which I just stated. Let's start from this guy here and prove in the uh, right to left direction. So suppose all pieces have length less than a half. And let's again use our kind of notation that we just had of our side lengths being A, B, and C with A being less than or equal to B being less than or equal to C. And um, yeah, of course, they're all positive. So we want to show that all three pieces form a triangle, but that's equivalent to showing that they satisfy the triangle inequality. So we want to show that A plus B is bigger than C. Obviously lazy. But this is true if and only if. Well, we know that A plus B plus C equals one because they're three pieces of stick which add up to one um, because they all form that, you know, if you put them all together, it makes the initial stick we had, which we know has length one. So A plus B is just one minus C. And that is bigger than C. Uh, so that this holds if and only if this holds, and this of course holds if and only if. If we add c to both sides and divide by two, we get that c is less than a half. But we know that this is true because all pieces uh, have length less than a half. So c have being less than a half means that a plus b is bigger than c. So that satisfies the triangle inequality, and hence we can um, we can always form a triangle from these three pieces. The next thing we want to do is prove the left to right direction. So suppose we have three pieces which form a triangle. 
Then we need that all pieces have like less than a half. But that's essentially coming from um, this guy here. If three pieces form a triangle, a plus b is bigger than c, which implies that one minus c is bigger than c, which implies c is less than a half, which of course, because a is less than or equal to b is less than or equal to c, implies that a, b and c are less than a half. So that proves the left to right direction as well. So that proves our thing. So all we need to do now is work, essentially work out the probability that all pieces have length less than a half. Let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've transformed our problem. Initially, we wanted to work out the probability that three pieces form a triangle. And we showed that that is equal to this guy here, the probability that all of those three pieces have length less than a half. Now, to work out this probability here, let's just start off with our stick of length one. And it has length one. And now we're gonna cut it in two pieces. But if this is our midpoint, so this is a point sort of a half, if we think of this as a number line, so this would be zero, this would be one. If our two cuts come on the same side of this midpoint, then the one of those cuts, one of those pieces, sorry, will be of length bigger than a half, and that contradicts this guy here. So if we say cut here and here, then this guy here, this long piece here, is clearly ha clearly has length bigger than a half. So we can't have that happening. Similarly, if we cut say here and here, this guy here has length bigger than a half. So what that means is our two cuts have to be sort of one on the left-hand side of the midpoint and one on the right-hand side of the midpoint. So that's a necessary condition. So for all three pieces to have length less than a half, certainly we need one on the left side and one on the right side. Uh, but notice that that isn't sufficient because we could cut say here and here. And obviously now this middle piece has a really long length, bigger than a half. But we certainly do need one to be on the left-hand side of the half and one to be on the right-hand side of the half. Well, what's the probability of just that happening? Well, that's clearly just by symmetry going to be a half. So probability, I'm not sure how I'm going to write this, uh, one left of a half and one right of a half. That's just going to be a half because, um, yeah, just by considering essentially the four different options, you can either have your first point here and then the second point there, the first point here and the second point there, the first point and the second point both being here, and the first and second point both being there. Okay, so the probability of one being left and one being to the right is just a half. But of course, as I just said, that isn't sufficient. So let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll work out what happens or how to work out when it is sufficient. Okay, so we just showed that we must have one cut to the left of the midpoint and one to the right of the midpoint. So suppose we do have that, and I've labelled our first, or the cut to the left of the midpoint C1 and the cut to the right of our midpoint C2. Firstly, notice that this kind of stick length here um, is obviously of length less than a half because it's of length C1, and C1 is less than a half, kind of by definition. And similarly, this guy here is always going to be less than a half. So the only one we're kind of interested in is this middle length here, the one between C1 and C2. And so essentially our problem is this guy here will be of length... Um, so we'll be able to form three pieces of our triangle if and only if this guy here, this stick length here, is less than a half. Now, how do we go about computing that probability? Well, what we're going to do is introduce two random variables, so L1 and L2. So L1 will be this distance between naught and C1, and L2 will be this distance between a half and C2. Now, if you perhaps think about it for just a second, you'll be able to notice that L1 and L2 are both uniformly distributed over zero a half okay uh, why is that true well remember that let's just look at c1 for example that's just a cut and that was uh, uniformly chosen between zero and one but then we were given the information that c1 is in the first half so between zero and a half so then that means that we now know that c1 is uniformly distributed over zero a half and that is exactly what l1 is and an exact uh, very similar argument holds for l2 as well we know that c2 is in the second half of zero one so in this interval here and we knew initially that that cut was uh, uniformly chosen over 0, 1, but now we've restricted it to just half of that, and hence we get that L1 and L2 are uniformly distributed over 0, a half. But in particular, notice that they have the exact same distribution, and a very kind of uh, standard property of, two, if you have two random variables which have the same distribution, the probability that one is bigger than the other is exactly a half. So the probability that L1 is bigger than L2 is just a half, and that's by symmetry, because they have the exact same distribution, so there's no reason why one should be, you know, there's no reason why one should be biased uh, in favour of the other. Like, you know, if you're going to flip a coin, a fair coin at least, there's no reason why heads should come up more often than tails. Similarly, if you have two things which should occur with equal 
kind of distribution, which is what we have here, there's no reason why L1 should occur more favorably than L2 and vice versa. Hence, by symmetry, the probability that L1 is bigger than L2 is a half. And I guess one thing I should note is that L1 and L2 here are continuous random variables and not discrete random variables, because if they were discrete, then there'd be some non, or there could be some non-zero probability that L1 equals L2, in which case we'd have probability of L1 being bigger than L2 is less than a half. But thankfully we don't have that. We have continuous random variables, so this guy here is certainly true. But now notice that the probability that this guy here, so the probability kind of C2 minus C1 is less than a half, which is what we want. We want this stick length to be less than a half is exactly equivalent to the probability that L1 is bigger than L2. And I guess one way you can think about that is if we draw on our number line again, here's zero, here's one, here's a half. And suppose uh, uh, C1 minus C2 was less than a half. So we could have say C1 is here and C2 is just there. Then very clearly this guy here is gonna, or sort of, uh, this is representing this, but then our L1 is this guy here, which is quite big, and L2 is quite here, is here, which is quite small. So certainly we have L1 is bigger than L2, and hopefully you can just perhaps see that this is actually rigorous if you draw the, perhaps the opposite case. So when C1 is small and C2 is big, so if we have not there, C1 there, our midpoint there, C2 there, and one there, then our L1 will be very small, L2 will be quite big, so this won't hold, L1 will be less than L2, but then C2 minus C1, this distance here, will be bigger than a half. So these two guys are the exact same event, so their probabilities will be the same, and thus the probability of this guy here is the probability that L1 is bigger than L2, but we already computed that, and that is just a half like so. So the probability that this middle stick here that we wanted to, that was the only one that we had issues with, because these ones were certainly less than a half, the probability that this middle stick here has length less than a half is exactly a half. So our final solution to the problem, the probability that all three lengths of our triangle have less than a half is not a half, but in fact a half times a half, which is a quarter. And the reason for that is if we just go back to what I did uh, just a second ago, is that we needed that the C1 be on the left hand side and that the C2 be on the right hand side. In other words, the two uh, randomly chosen points were on separate, you know, one was on the left of the midpoint and one was on the right. And that occurred with probability a half, and that's kind of where this first half comes from. And the second half comes from uh, the fact that once we have that, it's still not guaranteed that we're going to form a triangle. That occurs then with probability a half, which we just computed. And that's where the second half comes from. And of course, you multiply them together to give you a quarter. So if you take a stick of length one, cut it in two randomly chosen places, and you get three pieces, the probability you'll be able to make a triangle out of those three pieces is a quarter. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the solutions. Uh, let me know in the comments if you thought of any other solutions to this problem, because I'll be keen to hear them. Because I know there are quite a few. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.